Welcome to Words of Wisdom. On this podcast, we interview some of the most influential people in the world to uncover how they became the best so that we can help you understand how you can become the best. Hey, what's up, everybody? Grant Wise here. Welcome to Words of Wisdom. I'm extremely excited today to be interviewing Jen Cudmore, who is an energy coach and has we spent a little bit of time in our pre-show doing some work on me. And so I'm certainly excited for you guys uh, to dive into this conversation today and, and really just understand how impactful your energy is and how uh, you can really go out there and, and just do incredible things with uh, the way that you manage this. And so I would love to introduce Jen. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So great to be here and um, really nice to connect with you just before we started too. That was great. Yeah, no, it was. It was so fascinating. Um, let's dive into you a little bit. So just give us a little bit of the backstory. How'd you get to where you are today? Uh, well, I started off in the holistic world. I was a kinesiologist. So I'm, I'm trained as a, as a kinesiologist and a holistic kinesiologist. So if you've been to the chiropractor, you might have had some kinesiology where, you know, the basically the body represents the whole person. And so we can, you know, go in and we can find out what's going on in the body, the mind, the soul, you know, really the energetic system based on the body. So that was my original training. So I, I, I've been a kinesiologist for 16, nearly 17 years. So that's the basis of everything. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I noticed that, you know, because we're, we're navigating the inner world, all the, all the mindset stuff, I, I started to work with business people and, you know, move more into the branding and the coaching and the money mindset and all that kind of, all those things. So it was a journey, really. It's always, always been a journey. Yeah. It's so fascinating to me, and I really, I really, really thoroughly enjoy intellectual conversations around some of the, you know, stuff like this, this stuff around energy and spirituality and, and how those things translate back to business and mindset and, and branding and money, kind of like you're talking about. But I'm, I'm so anxious to know, uh, how have you seen energy directly correlate and impact brand or money or business as you've kind of gotten heavily integrated into the entrepreneurial world? Well, I think, I think it starts there. It, it, it yeah. starts, it starts, everything starts in the spiritual before it becomes physical. So, you know, if you, if you get sick, you've already been sick in the spiritual before you get sick in the physical. It's, I mean, it's always the information that we've always known. I'm like, because I'm, basically I'm a healer. I mean, that's mm. what I really, what I truly am from, from the beginning. And we've always known that. So, you know, if people have, for instance, people have a shock or a terrible breakup or a terrible rejection or a bankruptcy even, or like a financial crisis, and they might not get sick then, but you often see they might might get a cancer or something a few years later, and they and they track it back to the trauma that happened at that time, and so that's the negative part of things in the spiritual becoming first in the spiritual before they come in the physical. So if you think from an energy point of view, like if you're wanting to vibrate as you know as a high level business person or create a level of success you need to first create it in the spiritual before it can become in the physical. And, and we kind of get lost building things from the bottom up mm. or we can't see the vision to, to create it in the spiritual first to bring it into the physical. So, I mean, it all sounds very woo-woo and, and quite complicated, but it's, it's like children, really. We're like children, really. We see, we get a feeling of something and next minute we've created it. You know, that it's mm. nothing changes. We've got to just keep doing, moving in that direction and being that way. So I just, to me, it's sort of a no brainer. Like everything I've created for myself and the, and, the, and the success that I've had has started because I had a flicker. Like I had a light switch on. I had a yearning. I, I, I My soul was calling it in. And then it started to create. And then I, you know, then I had the strategy to follow. And then I, you know access the programs or the mentors or the the strategies that were in alignment for that but it all started with this feels bigger than me this this feels bigger than me i have to move towards it mm -hmm. is that how is that like is that the process of manifesting or manifestation is that 
what that is and, and how that works? Pretty much, yeah. It's like you can feel that you're there's something bigger mm-hmm. or you can see that there's something bigger. There's another, you know, you might see it in someone else. Like we all get inspired by people that we see online and people that are ahead of us and their success. But there's, you, there's a funny energy around that too because then you can just want to copy them. So it's got to, when you see what someone's got, like maybe they've got a jet plane or something, right? Let's all go with that one. And so you think, oh, yeah, I want that. But do you really? Do you really want a jet plane? Maybe you don't. Maybe you just want to get on a plane and the, and the air hostess mm-hmm. takes your bag. Mm-hmm. So you've got to make sure that it's really a code that you've always wanted. Like it's really something that you that is really inside of you. And if it's inside of you and it's something that did you felt the goosebumps or you felt the inspiration like within yourself, I want to say within your body, not just your mind, therefore it's possible for you. Mm. because it means that you can you've got it it's a code that you can see it's something that you could actually create otherwise you just got envy disease do you know what I mean and you're trying to be <laughs> right. like that's toxic because then you're always right. going to feel like you're never going to be a success and you're always hungry you spend your whole life in this hunger and, and the hunger games if you like right. and we don't want the hunger games we want the nourished games like oh my god ever since I was a little boy or girl, I really felt that I was going to be doing this or this feels nice to me or you see someone online and this, that feels like that could be the next level of me. I could totally see myself doing that thing on that beach, you know, stepping off that plane, wearing those type of clothes and you can feel it. So that I think that's something, um, there's something in that people have to come back to themselves and they have to go, you know, to a deeper part of themselves. Otherwise, they're just, um, you know, they're just playing a bit more of a superficial game and they're going to be disappointed because it's a scarcity. It's a scarcity energy then, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. It does. I mean, and, and a curiosity I have is when we talk about manifesting, and, and I heard you say this a couple of times when we were chatting in, in, in the pre-show, you said, you know, I thought of this and then I just, I put it down and I went back to working and, and, and doing whatever it was that I was doing. Cause I know that that's coming. Can yeah. you elaborate on that a little bit? Cause it, it sounds like I, I've, I've heard people say, when you manifest something, you want to work on it. You want to be intentional about it. You want to, you want to move towards it hundred percent of the time or nonstop or whatever. But you, when we were talking about it, you're like, if I was going to do X amount of dollars per month, or I was going to do this or going to do this, I set the intention and then I just walk away and I go back to doing or being or, or serving. And so could you elaborate a little bit on, on how that, that works for you? Yeah, I think it's all to do with the rewiring of the brain too. Like when you're new on this journey, when you're new, when you're new, when you're in, I want to say like a young soul on the journey of self-discovery and knowing about yourself and your energy and really your unique design, you might have to be a robot about manifesting because you might be having to overcome, you know, a lot of trauma, a lot of people against you, uh, uh, some adversity situations. And therefore you're going to be journaling till you're blue in the face. You're going to be doing your (laughs) affirmations. You're going to be pushing weights. You're going to be running marathons. You're going to be deleting everyone except for the five people that you think are good. Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to be like that. And then when you get to the next level, it's almost like, the, the, a level that's a little bit more into a, I want to say, a more peaceful plane, you make the decision that you're already wired for it. Like sometimes, as I said, there's sometimes some wiring, like you have to do some heavy duty wiring. It's like sometimes you just have to go on a diet to lose weight and then you can go to intuitive eating. But before then, you're just having, you know, vegetables and meat. That's all you're having. That's it, mm-hmm. you know. And so, you know, sometimes you need to do a detox where you're like a robot manifesting, you're doing your journal, you're walking, you know, running, running it into your system, listening to affirmations, doing the whole thing. But when you get to the point where you just know that you're meant for more, that you're, you're coded to be bigger, go bigger, make more of an impact, earn more money. You just decide that that's the case and you just lock it in. So, I mean, there's a daily manifesting that would still need to happen. You need to, you know, have a little journal. I've got one anyone can grab. I'll tell you the details of that on the back of of the call. 
but you know you just be doing your no, no right with there's so much research around things that you write down becoming true so we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. we're going to write you know 50k months or 100k months or some of the some of the clients are million dollar months whatever they're doing and and you just write it so you just be writing that and then you'll be getting around as the woman or as the man that is a 50k month man or woman or a 100k month man or woman or more and you just decide it's in your code so you might start suddenly changing the way your office is mm -hmm. you might think buying you might buy different clothes you just might be working in that direction but the way that I work and what I just see working so well for the long-term game and for the integrity piece is really you're here for something you're here to help people you're here to serve you're, you're here to do something that's bigger you've got you've got a bigger contribution so once you've locked and loaded and your brain pathways you know I'm a kinesiologist so we have ways of locking it into the nervous system so it becomes actually embodied it's in your cellular in your cellular system that that's where you vibrate then you just get over yourself and go and do what you're called to do like you might have to push through and, and and you know get some stuff done and it's more about the money's already decided and I'm being called to serve people in this way or I've been called to to do this in this way and then you it works out it's freaky it works out I've got a lot of proof yeah, it works out for a lot of people. It's quite spooky, but it's also because you're getting in your soul pathway. You're getting soul aligned. You're getting into true alignment. And when you're in true alignment, you're more magnetic and therefore you're going to attract opportunities that you can't open with strategy. Even with the best strategy in the world, you, you, won't, you won't really get to that next level lift where the magic is unless you're really in that kind of soul alignment or you're really aligned with what it is that you're really being called to do. Do we, do we get signals that we're out of alignment? Um, I think we all, we all get signals. Yeah. And some, some people don't read them. Some people think it's, some people think the signal of being out of alignment is, oh, it's a strategy that's not working. Oh, here's a shining object. This has just popped up on Facebook and I buy that program that's mm -hmm. why that's the missing piece oh my god that's that's why it hasn't worked and then they'll spend another two years doing that or another you know 10 grand on that program or whatever and they haven't seen that they haven't quite been in alignment with what they're really meant to be doing mm. and it's not for everyone like most a lot of people don't just don't want to go that deep right they just want the I'm, money they... sorry keep going yeah, they just want the money and, and then the shoe, and then they're just always in fear that the shoe's going to drop because they're not really in the supported abundant paradigm. You know, they're not really in that abundance mindset. They're not really just unleashed being who they're really meant to be. How does somebody, somebody discover that? How does somebody discover who they're meant to be? Well, they've got to want to. I think mostly they've just got to want to. Hmm. Because if they, you know, it's there's a whole lot of spiritual laws around this. You know, when you're ready, the the master appears. You know, there's right. all those. <laughs> yes. When you want something and you ask for it, because remember, there's the the biblical thing: ask and you will receive. You got to ask for what you want. And I think, and I think this is a point too. People are afraid to ask for what they want. <clears throat> They're just afraid to. And. Um, because they don't think they can type of thing. They just don't think they can. We are, I would, I would argue, I don't even think it needs argument. I think we're programmed, you know, from a very young age through life's experience to be and do and act certain ways. And would you say that through self-awareness, which is kind of what you just said, you know, that, that intention or that desire to, you know, figure out those things about yourself that you can reprogram yourself. Is that something that people consistently do that you work with? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think people are really programmed, <clears throat> and that's the whole thing around um, getting unprogrammed and re and really following your own unique design. You know what it is that you're really meant to be doing. And um, 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, and, that, and that's an activation, you know, that's a challenge because people can't do it. Like they don't know how to start or they, they've got something in their system that won't let them do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that's really key. So it's sort of like a, um, it's like a waking up, if you like. I think one and of the I greatest, think... sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say one of the, what feels like greatest skills I ever acquired was that ability to consistently reinvent myself. Obviously there was a desire there, but when I learned that I could essentially define who I wanted to be, and then I would become that. <laughs> and and, and it, just that consistent tweaking and refining and elevating and, and, and leveling up, I guess you could say. I mean, it just, it felt so freeing knowing that at any moment that I decided I could become whatever it was that I wanted to become. And if I was willing to do the work, if I was willing to, you know, move forward and become that. Uh, but it seems like there are ways that just almost feel effortless when you're, when you're so intentional about it. Yeah. And, and I think talking about influencing and influences, when people do that, they activate it in someone else. Mm. So when you, when you activate who you're really meant to be, it, it activates in someone else. Like, you know, there's amazing research on this where you've, they've found that there's a part in our DNA that the scientists didn't really know what it was. It was, I think it's called junk DNA. And what they worked out that when, when someone's lit up, when they're really, really, I want to say in their soul or who they're really meant to be, inspired really, like truly inspired, like from the inside out, they walk into a room and it actually activates all these light particles and everyone else in the room. Now, we kind of know this from a mindset point of view, but they've actually seen it in people's bodies and they've, they've caught it, you know, they've, they've scientifically caught it. So if you're really activated in who you're really meant to be, it, it just triggers other people. Yeah. And suddenly they'll get, you know, that's what your podcast is about. You know, like people listen to that and they, and suddenly a light comes on. And so we got to know it's not just mindset. It's like a light switches on. Suddenly we know the diet to do. Suddenly we're at the gym. Suddenly we're really activated in this contribution energy of building the hundred K month, million dollar month, whatever it is that we're building. Mm -hmm. and something's just switched. Like the lights just come on. And um, so it's not really, it, it can just be flicked. You can just flick the switch and, and it will come on. And, and so the thing is like, why doesn't the switch flick? I think you want to ask next probably mm -hmm. like, how do you switch it on? Or why doesn't it switch on? Like you spend all this time getting coached or mentored or buying things and still you've got this dullness or you've got this oppression energy stopping you doing it. And, and you know, I think that's that's where my work comes in with the kinesiology and doing the deeper energy energy and the healing work. Basically, energy here, at clear, um, energy clearing and healing, so you can clear some of the brain pathways, some of the trauma, some of the stuff in the nervous system that's stopping it. You 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 know those people easily switching on into you know what I'm definitely being going to become this type of man. I'm definitely. I know it's within me to have a jet. I know it's within me to have a big following. I know it's within me to build this company and have a really good culture. And you make that decision and then the pieces start to come in. What have you seen? Are, are people, walk me through like a, a story, I, I, I guess, you know, somebody that you've worked with that maybe has come to you and, and they wanted the life they wanted the the you know they wanted the big stuff but they were just trapped and they didn't know why like how, how do you go what's the process how do you how do you work through some of this stuff in a way that allows somebody to feel like they've broke free yeah well so what what I, I always start with the basics like like with you before like I just want to know what someone's I work with the brand archetypes and the money archetypes because I just want to know who they are like and I've I don't know I might have a bit of a gift with this I can just sort of see things straight away I can feel the best in people and I can feel the the yearning of them their potential really 
And so I always, ha I have that as a quick hack. So like, I'll find out what, what the archetypes are and we didn't have you cry. That's, that was a bit disappointing, but you know, <laughs> I've had like, I'm up to like 15 grown men just start crying when you start reading the archetype card to them because it's like, what am I know? Yeah, I know. You've just seen that that's who I am and I'm, I'm so friggin' amazing. And so mm. I just, I mean, I think people are way more amazing than they realize. And I just get, I just sort of geek out on that. So, you know, I'll start with that and then I'll take it from there. And there's, there's usually, there's usually ways things to clear like there's a, something in the childhood there's something in the generational line and with being an energy person I mean I'm geeking out and going all over the all over it like I'm going into every corner and I'm sweeping out that corner hang on this thing's coming up and I follow the kinesiology on it like I follow the um, my system of muscle testing that I use to find it you know remotely and everything and, um, and we just uncover it. I mean, there's so many stories to tell you. I'm just trying to think which would be the one that I'd tell you. But, you know, I think if you're on purpose, things start to work out and you start to, you start to clear what's in the way of the purpose. Mm. So how I work is we, we, go, we find out what the purpose is or the direction, and then we just clear, clear everything in the way. Mm -hmm. Just clear everything in the way of it. So... How, how does one go through the process of clearing, you know, those things out? Because I, I know that, like, as we're talking, it sounds simple. Even in some of the work, when we were working together before the show, some of the stuff you were just going through and doing, you're like, okay, that's done. Okay, boom, that's done. And then, you know, I'm just saying, like, is it that easy? Like, how, this feels like it's very, very simple. What's, what's, uh, what's, what's next? And so can you walk me through that a little bit? Yeah, it, 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 well, the way that I work is quite simple because that's what I stand for, simplicity. So simplicity equals success. And it's just, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm quite a God person, so I believe in God and the universe and those things. So I would expect that anyone who's working with me or found me is ready to be healed. Mm. And then I'd expect that God would be taking care of the details. I just expect that. And I'd expect that anyone that who, who naturally found me has got their own grace, that they're ready to have a shift. So mm. I've already coded that in my work. So you can code whatever you want into your work. So if you're so like if you're a businessman or a businesswoman, you can code that every client that has a dealing with your company, even if it's not you, has an outcome. You can just intend that. <clears throat> so a lot of um high level entrepreneurs now are really onto this. So they, they were, you know, as led, you know, CEOs of their company, they would spend a lot of their time on mindset and the energy work where they would just have the intention, basically working on the energy of the business that anyone who comes into their container or buys any of their products has an energetic experience of something. So an answer to that question, um, it's coded that who would come would have an outcome. Mm. And so my job as an energy, as for my own manifestation and for my own purpose in the world, I spend a good chunk of my, of my day in the energy of surrendering to a higher power that anyone who would be working with me would be um, served for the highest good of all. It's part of what I, it's part of my whole journey as a, it's my sole purpose. So, I mean, this is a journey I've been on since real, since I was 18. I'm 57 now. It's a long time that I've been, you know, looking into the energy of how can I be more of service? At the same time, you know, I'm, I like to have things for me, like I want to have a, a good life. So, you know, how do I pull that together in a way that's an integrity and it's a nice weave of the two? Yeah. Can... Can you, have you ever found yourself in, in, in points in your life where you, I want to say, I don't know if it's a lack of confidence or lack of clarity or um, resist, resistance or resentment, like what do you yourself go through? I mean, all of us go through highs and lows in life, but talk to me for just a second about the lows, if you, if you feel it, how, how did you get yourself out of those those moments was it 
through some of the energy work that you're talking about now or maybe being coached yourself or, or can you talk to me about you know how how do you do this through the lows yeah so it's always been a journey for me like if I learned pretty early on I was probably in my 20s that if ever I, I didn't like being in pain so if ever I, if I ever wasn't going well I'd get help straight away like straight mm. away like you know how people have got crap going on in their relationships or breakups with boyfriends and all those kind of things I would always get help like you know as you know I'd spend nine hundred dollars on acupuncture or like it's a lot of money for a teenager you know like a 20 something and everyone else would be going to the pub and you know talking shit I would go oh I could feel that I've really got to get that out of my system so because of that that's probably how I found the modality that I work with and also for me I can't stand anyone having that in their systems like it's a legacy thing for me it's like oh my god you're in pain with that like even when we were talking before and while you were trying to work out I thought I've got to work this out like how much time have we got can we start this podcast later like <laughs> And, and it's not that I'm trying to create a relationship or anything. It's not even about that. It's just within me that I'm kind of, it's just my personality. Mm. And, you know, we talk about the childhood wound. So I think that for me, what it would track to in my childhood wound was, I didn't find out about this till I was in my 20s. And it's not much of a wound compared to other people's. But it was probably, when you think about it, it was quite big. I, we arrived in England when I was three years old. My dad was a headmaster when he got a sabbatical in England. We arrived off the ship, you know, the cruise ship. And I had measles and pneumonia. And they didn't want to get put in quarantine, so they didn't go to the ship doctor. So we had these friends who were doctors met us at the ship. He took one look at my, it's all right, we're going to see the doctors about 10 o'clock at night. He took one look at me and said, no, she's got to go straight to hospital. And so my parents took me up to the hospital there in, in London and, um, and they put me straight into quarantine. And my parents left then and didn't come back six weeks later, which was quite, when I, when I found out, like I wondered why I was sort of a bit sensitive, you know, when I was growing up and I felt like I had something within me that felt sensitive and then they sort of randomly said, as a matter of fact, I said, you, I said, you what? No wonder <laughs> I been sort of like had this emptiness, you know, like I couldn't work out this empty feeling. And I noticed the other girls just seemed really, really relaxed, you know, girlfriends and kids. And, and I had this kind of empty edginess. And I thought, what's that edginess? You know, and I'd be afraid of the dark and things like that. And then um, my parents randomly said that. And, you know, back in the day, that's what they were told to do. You know, the white coats decided what was happening to the, to the people. The doctors decided. And so they didn't come back. So when they came back, and when I was, so I was two and a half, actually nearly three, I couldn't walk and talk. So I must have had such an emotional regression, if you think mm. about it, that I'd lost my, like I lost my spirit or I lost my hope that probably they were ever going to come back. And so I just think that that's this thing that's inside of me and everybody's got something that's the driving force where I don't want to see my fellow man in pain. I just don't want to. Mm -hmm. And so, and, it, and, I, and I think it was probably in my destiny to have that experience because I can't switch it off, you know, like, and so it's a great, so if I'm being strategic as a businesswoman, that's a pretty good driver because I will never run out of energy ever, ever, ever if I've got someone to help. I, we had a guy stay the night last night. It was a friend of my husband's and he'd had a, you know, a really pretty terrible um, divorce situation. And so we're down here in the office last night and he was grateful because I did a, you know, an hour and a half session on him. He had a, his leg was even, you know, like, septicemia like was actually coming out of his body that was my original thing we'd find a cancer or something like that and we'd clear the energy and all the emotional work on it and you know they'd they'd get healed basically I had a guy that had a tumor that didn't have a tumor like it's mm. ra some random miracles you know the next week from doing some of the healing work so but I, I mean I could have been sitting up there we could have had you know cups of tea and no let's go and do it I just couldn't see that he would got to find what's behind this leg you know we've got to <laughs> we got to we got to pull it out and so you know it's just within me and I think if people can find that then then you've got a never-ending source of energy 
how important is it to protect your energy whenever you you're working through things or i mean just in general how important is that you know it's funny i heard you say that on on your last podcast too you're talking about protecting energy and um I think it's pretty important, but you can't get paranoid about it because negative energy and dark, you know, definitely there's dark and light, there's good and bad energy. And the more, you can't be afraid of bad energy though, because mm. it wants your attention. So I think there's a, there's a real dance with protecting energy where you're not afraid, but at the same time, you're looking after your energy. So, you know, it's really, it's really difficult for a lot of um, entrepreneurs who have to cut a lot of people as they're starting to get success you know they've got to cut family mm -hmm. they've got to cut people because they're basically rewiring their brains and they need the soul space to really move into the new direction mm -hmm. but you know I the way that I work is we don't really need to do that it's sort of like if we can heal some of the family energy that's inside your own cellular energy it can sometimes change other people or it can lighten the pattern. Like, so it's not such mm. a thing to move away from because it, it'll come back and swing. It's like a scorpion's tail. It comes back and hits you. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, really a lot of my work is sort of spiritual warfare, really. Like oh, if man, I, really, I, I love it, this topic. I love this topic. I think... Warfare. I think we're all going through spiritual warfare and I think people are going through it so unknowingly. I mean, for the lot, I think a vast majority of people are just going through life and may or may not be choosing to pay attention to the fact that it, it seems like there is this battle of light and dark. I mean, there's just this war going on in most people. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, part of, you know, the people that I work with and how I work is we are pulling out the, like the, the even the thing last night with that guy, we're pulling out the dark stuff. Like I'm kind yeah. of, I'm, I'm, I'm not wanting to, but it's just the way. And, and with the kinesiology and how I work coaching using the kinesiology, the kinesiology is only going to bring up what's ready to be changed, God willing. Like, and so, you know, even the session that we just did on you, I thought it would be something else that would get, but I just follow the kinesiology. And what I got was what you're ready right now to let go. Like that's done. Like that's erased, deleted, finished. And then you'll just see it. You'll just see it pattern out. You'll just see, oh, that's interesting. That wasn't as trigger. Or you might get a bit of a lash back. Like, and sometimes it's not, I don't want to say it's a healing crisis, but sometimes you get one more look at things before it goes or you know obviously people work a little bit more closer in a, in a relationship with me we can well this has come up like let's clear this let's clear this let's clear this but I mean we're working with sometimes multi-million dollar deals too you know like we're clearing the energy on that we're making sure that there's not a family pattern that's in the way or some people just don't want the best for you and we've just got to cut cords to them and we've got to go in and we've got to you know, um, make sure that you're in alignment. So, and when people are in alignment, what I love about it is they don't usually attract as many haters. They don't usually attract as much jealousy because people intuitively know on a soul level that that person's fulfilling a destiny and they know that there's a spiritual law around destiny. So we're all spiritually coded to fulfill our destiny and nothing's allowed to get in the way of that. So it's just like little games of dark, you know, dark energy or little games of people who are playing small. It's like, just brush that off and we just realign, realign, realign. Um, but, you know, I think there's a lot of things around spiritual protection. Like, you know, I do prayers and things like that. I have quite a, um, I've got a really good partner. I've got a really good husband who's a very strong spiritual man. And so he will be, praying protection for me you know even if I'm going live sometimes I go hey can you just send one out there for me because I don't know who's coming to the call and I don't know who's going to listen and you know they might be triggered by I don't want to say the light because I'm not assuming that I'm of the light necessarily mm -hmm. I would hope I would be but they might I just don't want to pick up any energy I just want to get on with the job and do the thing you know I just want to be clear and clean and helpful you know so you know, and, and I'm, I'm determined to be. And so nothing will stop that because I'm, it's just part of me to always be helping, try to help. Mm. 
you know, with the codes that I've got or the 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 the, the um, craft that I've got that I can use to find things out. This is going to sound maybe like a, an extremely basic or or simple question, but I, you hear people all the time talk about vibrations, you know, positive vibrations, negative vibrations. Can you elaborate on that you know, a little bit for us in talking about? you know how you are vibrating in the world what does that mean yeah it's a real it's a real cliche isn't it it's like and I use the language too because it's people understand that language like you're a vibrational match for 100k months or you're a vibrational match for your soul aligned clients and things like that like I love it it's great language to use but you know what your vibration really just means your energy really it's like it's like the feeling about you, like the magnet, the magnetism of you, mm. you know, I, I think that's, that's what it really is. Um, and um, can you we, know, it, can we control it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you, if you ever got into power versus force, the, um, David Hawkins book, the map of consciousness, Mm -mm, I'd have to, I have to check it out. No. Yeah, you have to check it out. So the map of consciousness, you can see it's a very well thumbed book. Yeah. And and there's a map of consciousness, and you can see it's a very thumbed book. Um, this map here. And so what we're doing is we're evolving always to a higher level of consciousness. And the higher that you go, the lighter it is. The lighter your energy is. So it's you've got a lighter sort of frequency and you know when we're working with money and when we're working with success people think they have to go heavy and hard to get there they actually need to go lighter <clears throat> they need to feel lighter they need to feel lighter about the fact that it's a multi-million dollar deal actually not heavier they need to feel lighter about the fact that they're trying to call in 100k months instead of seventeen thousand dollar months it's actually lighter and from that lighter energy, you know, they, they've got more access to imagination. They've got more, more access to their co-creation code. So, you know, we kind of create with life itself. We create with people. We create with God. We create with our imagination. And so we've got a fluidity around it. And so, you know, those you just start to feel good around the lighter people. And what's really interesting about that energy of lightness, I'm not talking about light as in white, I'm, you know, light and dark. I'm talking light as in a lighter energy, so mm. light and heavy. You'll attract people who are similar because that's just the way the universe works. So what I always get people to do too is make sure they're doing their deeper work in the world like they are the niche like make sure they're saying what they're meant to be saying and being who they're meant to be being and and going in the direction of the unique work of who they are and what they're doing because they'll attract people who are ready for that work and therefore it'll activate the work to a new level of creation mm. So, you know, if you just think about even with the, the real estate market that you're often relating to, you know, like the more they are themselves. I had a client the other day, I had a lot of real estate people and she got a client that asked if they could pay more commission. Like in this market, can you imagine in this market in yeah. Dallas? It's in Dallas. Like who would say, can we pay you more commission? And I just, it was just a no brainer for me. I went, of course they said that. Of course it just, I was just like natural for me that that would say that to her. And she just took it. Like it was natural that they did. She celebrated and, you know, and we went, yeah, you're a romantic. You're in, you're, you're in this archetype. You're, you're being this, you're being such an integrity person. They knew they were getting more from you than what, than what they were seeing. You attracted that client because you're in the vibration of that. Mm. <clears throat> it's a pretty interesting journey. It's a really exciting journey and it's always unfolding, isn't it? Like the people that you start to attract and the, and the, and how that lifts you into a higher vibration of, who you're meant to be or, or the way your thinking starts to expand and your generosity starts to expand. And the generosity paradigm is just like, it's just such a delicious paradigm. What, what is that? Mindset. What is well, that? Explain it Well, it's like the generosity of, the generosity paradigm is really the abundance paradigm. Like you're generously sharing who you are in the world because mm. you know you've already locked and loaded the fact that you want the, you know, the 10K month or you're locked in for the 
million dollar business or the seven figure business and so you're really like inspired if you want to get biblical about it and you know gaudy about it you know like you're looked after when you're being how you're meant to be in the world when you're designed in a certain way to be talented at this and that and you're you're willing to go all in on that talent all in on that gift hack it you know like work hard if you need to and sometimes not work hard if you need to so you can be in the manifesting and the dreaming in and make sure your energy is light then um it's all taken care of mm. and then the right people come and they go hey have you thought about this investment or hey have you thought about flipping this or doing that or have you thought about doing oh there's a new software te technical people have just landed on your lap oh my god i can now that seven multi thing here i can just see that just is just going to come into play mm -hmm. so powerful and you're allowed to live there you're allowed to live there and so what people do is they bounce into the prosperity paradigm and because there's a whole thing in quantum science around you know polarity and then they think oh now i have to bounce out unconsciously or subconsciously oh i just felt like i had one guy he, he i was telling you about him before built a hundred million million dollar company at 33 lost it you know then he's building the next one and we had to jump in and go uh, 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 we're not losing it again we've got to clear everything in your system that believes that then it has to lose it what's in your energy system what's in your family line what's in you that thinks that it's and it was an, an addiction to the fight flight like addiction to the sacrifice this guy's such a good dude I'm mean, got so much integrity mm -hmm. and it was like there was part of him that was sabotaging it now you can do all the mindset stuff and that's all there and it's all really good and that's part of the work we do but it's more the energy system mm -hmm. like you need to know you know so it's not even it's even beyond the mind Anyway, so we just, what we actually ended up doing with him, and he talks about it, so he, he won't mind, I won't tell you his name, but he doesn't mind me sharing, he's, he's done a video for me on this. We just got him on a monthly goal, like this is a guy, he's a, you know, he's a badass, he's similar to you, like he's just meant for big things, like as far as business and building empires, he's just meant, he's just meant for it. There's a whole lot of people like that, you know, they're just, just naturally, they're going to be in the, they've all got private jets, so they're going to have them, there's just what they're meant to have, Right because that's what they're coded for. But we, he hadn't, and I said, what about, you know, what are you, what's your monthly goal? And he just didn't have one. And so once again, his whole energetic system was waiting for a timeline that was happening later. Like the next thing was a $55 million one. And he was saying, oh, it's seven years or it's five years. And I go, well, we need to, what you're then doing is you're telling the universe or you're telling the world that something's happening later. And that's really clever strategic business stuff. Like I know that's business, normal mm -hmm. business, but energetically, it looks like this. <laughs> it looks like you're putting yourself on hold and that you don't matter and that you're not grounded and your energy's not embodied. What about this? Why don't we just get a monthly goal? I said, what do you want for a month? And he, like he was probably on about probably like a lot of these guys like I'm really surprised a lot of them actually don't take home that much money even though they're building these multi-billion dollar companies and I know it's strategic to put money back into the company but energetically sometimes it's not good because they're not actually in the energy of money they're not actually having their own money so they can put things on hold and, and it's often the wives that suffer or the partners or the the engagement that gets put off or the kids that get put off because we're waiting to build the company we all know how sometimes then the company gets swept away or the government changes something or something happens so there's something really powerful about being really in the intention of having an income like having what is your what is what is the gift of you create you know and, and what is what would that be anyway so we said a thing he wanted 83.4 K a month and I think the first that first month we got 150 and it's about five months later and he's up to 550 a month now mm. and it's changed his life like he just looks completely different now this is a guy that can he knows money he knows building but it was something about being in the prosperity 
of he was enough, like his gift is enough, him as a person. And there's something really activating energetically about money like that, like the money of you and, and, it, and it being created by you being you, you know, like yeah. it's nothing beats it. It's, it's very powerful. I think there's a, a you know, massive part of society that pushes us to the opposite, to feel the opposite, to, to not want so much, to, you know, not try to generate so much, to just be grateful for the, you know, there's just all of these different types of things to suppress the, the, the good side of, you know, what having money makes you feel like. <laughs> and not that it's, it's um, I don't want anybody to think that I'm talking about like materialism or anything like that but you know if i have more money it means i can make a bigger contribution i'm not but i'm not looking at something and saying if i have more money i can have like another car or i can do this or do that it's like no, i can do bigger stuff in the world if i have you know yeah. access, access to more so it's 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 pretty incredible what happens when you you're paying attention to these things yeah and it's not it's not an or it's an and you can have the car and the jet yeah. and you can give more money yeah do you know what i mean and but but you know i think the next the next level of it is you've got to be prepared to surrender all of it you know like if you really want to be in the codes of abundance where you know that you're completely connected to i want to say god and the universe then i would choose that over all the stuff anyway mm-hmm so, you know, that would be a question. Would you choose this feeling of connection to life itself, to your own unique design, to your own soul, to God, if you're into God or the universe flowing through you, would you give up that for the house, the car, the jet, the billion dollar business? And if that is yes, then we've got, then that's what you're choosing and therefore it can get taken away again because you're so attached to it i mean it's almost buddhist isn't it mm. and so you've got to find the the dharma of it you've got to find the the fluidity of the surrender at this you know that's the dance it's a dance between surrendering yes i'm you know going for 100k a month i'm a vibrational match of 100k a month blah, blah 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 at the same time i have everything i need mm. And, and you've, got to, you've got to have enough room in your energetic system and your nervous system and your mind and your soul and your whole being that you can hold both of those things together and they're not in conflict. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the test. So, you know, if, when you're building a company or you're, you're attracting more clients or you're growing your money, you've got to have room for it in your system. You've got to be light enough. So if you're looking at energy, Energy is really, um, really like energy can get really dense. It's like if I just show you the scribble, like it gets really dense, right? And what we want to do, so someone who's building business like that, that feels heavy and dense. How can we got to fit more clients and oh, how are we going to do it? We need more people, you know, like, and then it becomes logical. We need more leads. We need more people and you know, all the logic business stuff. But if you think about it energetically, if we spread out the energy and we create more space, there's more room. If you're looking at it like it's an atom, sort of like a cell, there's mm. more room for things to come in. So you've got a, the hardest thing is the paradox. Like how can I really be super focused on making seven figures this year or whatever you're going for, eight figures, and at the same time being totally grateful for the toyota that i've got or the you know mm -hmm. what yeah. honda civic or whatever you've got how can you do it and still hold the energy of the guy that's driving the lamborghini how can you do it well you can you just decide you can mm. and then you say and then you know when you you know you know when you're there grant is when something arrives and you go oh yeah of course like it's not like oh my goodness you're ringing or, oh my god i hit this figure so yeah, yeah, of course I hit 100k mark, of course. Mm. And that when you've got that, of course, you know that you're in flow, you're in you're in alignment. Where every, and then everything's just a blessing. Like you're almost in tears the whole time with, oh my goodness, look, I'm looking out my window at a yachts on a sparkling white water just here. You know, and it's just like, oh my goodness, this is just amazing. It's like you're living in this field of love and flow. 
and you're asking for more because you can and you know again if you want to get biblical about it and, and universal law about it I feel like it's the same thing when you've got talent you get given more talent when you're abundant you get given more everyone who has will be given everyone who has will be given more he will have an abundance it's mm -hmm. a spiritual law it's in the it's biblical and so you've got to ask for more actually you've got to ask for more because otherwise you're not becoming more so if you're setting a goal at 20 or 30k and you're feeling like well humble about it no look I'm not asking for too much you know and well then actually you should be asking for more <laughs> but it's you're not asking for more money you're asking to be more to be more to be bigger so that you would be the person that would create that because guess what then you're paying more taxes I'm, I'm really big on the fact that not everyone's talented like you know everyone goes everyone's got a talent well actually this is a personal you know polarity statement I don't think everyone is actually <laughs> some people actually just aren't and some people have got like there's some terrible traumas happening on the planet at the moment. And just there always has been like some people have got the shittiest childhoods and and they might not make it. You know, I don't want to say we're going to leave them, but they might not make a million dollars ever. Right. You know, they might just because their, their brain might have been hurt by, by the drugs that their mother had in the womb. Who knows? And they might not get the resources and they might have too much abuse in their life. And so the people who have got a bit of talent and a bit of go and a bit of drive, we've got to go for it. Like we've got to do as much as we can so that there's an overflow of money and opportunity for the people that might not, might, might not be able to. So I, I think about it like that too. Like if I'm holding back going, oh, I think 20K is enough, you know, I don't want to be greedy. Well, if I can see a way to make $100,000 or $200,000 a month or more than that, I should be going for it because I, I believe I'm coded to be a good person and therefore that energy's got good money. The, 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 the energy of that money's good and mm. it's going to go. You know, there's all that. There's also, I mean, I, you know, I'm a money mindset coach. There's just no end of stuff we can talk about, but you bless the money in and you bless the money out. You know, you just give big kiss as you pay the tax bill thank god i can pay all that tax you know there's a kid that's going to get something hopefully if you've got a good government you know what i mean like <laughs> right. that's another whole story but have you noticed that the people with the most money have the most power mm -hmm. they get they get on the council they decide what's happening in the local council they get they get in politics they get to do stuff and so if you're like oh i don't know if i should have more than 30k a month you might not have the influence that you can have mm. the word that sticks out to me after all of our conversation today is just power it sounds like what you do is so powerful and the way that you help people is is so powerful and that sounds like people can unlock so much power within themselves if if they pay attention to these types of things and i uh it's it's getting late here it's about 9 35 p.m my time and i want to respect yours and because i've taken a lot of it today but i jen i cannot thank you enough for coming on the show today and talking about uh, energy and, and, and vibration and, and all of these things in, in our conversation, even pre-show, it's, it's been incredibly impactful. And I know that anybody listening to this is, is going to get some real wisdom from it. So thank you so much uh, for being on the show and spending some time with me today. I hope, I know it's, uh, you're kind of getting your day started over there. So I hope you have an amazing day and uh, yeah, just thank you so much. Thank, thanks so much, Grant. Thanks so much for having me and yeah, it was great. Thanks. Love it. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Words of Wisdom. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you for listening to this episode of Words of Wisdom. This is a show designed to inspire you to become a better leader so that you can win in all areas of your life. Please don't forget to subscribe to the show. Please rate and review this episode on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget, go off and share your favorite words of wisdom from today's show. Thank you.